Okay, so I'm I'm off screen now, so I can't I can't see anybody. But if anyone has like questions, please interrupt, ask questions throughout this process because I want to make sure that I'm covering anything. So wh whenever whenever you want to drop an offer using Transaction Desk, the first place you go is Matrix. Matrix and Transaction Desk are synced. They're two MLS systems. They speak to each other, which is one of the great reasons that um, the one of the great reasons to use Transaction Desk. Um, so I'm here. I'm at a property. I'm looking for clients in in Bothell. So um your first step always when using transaction desk is coming to matrix and clicking on this little guy right here okay this little pencil and paper as you can see when i hover it says transaction desk is what's going to bring you from matrix over into transaction desk like so so you essentially click and then you get populated into this window now do not ever close this window okay there's a thousand different ways to use transaction desk i'm showing you, what, showing you the way that i prefer but do not ever click out of this window you're entering into the wizard okay the wizard is what makes transaction desk so great this is an auto populating feature um and all of this was pulled directly from matrix so you can see that we have our uh, name of the transaction you can adjust this as you see fit the type of transaction this is a residential sale you can import data always make sure that this is filled out it auto populates for matrix this is a single family mls number and add me as buyer broker okay the more you fill out the easier that it's going to be you can press create transaction and it's going to bring you into another window like here so now where you see these details right here this is essentially the first step of five steps that's going to take you through the wizard a lot of this stuff is auto populated already. You don't have to fill it out. You just have to make sure that it's correct. Um, so as you see, when we're scrolling through, we have our street number, our address, our city, our county, state, um, property type, listing number, year built and tax ID. Okay. When you get down to purchase information, this is just the first set of items that you're going to have to fill out because obviously matrix isn't going to know what price you're offering. Um, but like I said, the more you fill it out, the more or the easier it's going to be. So over here, what says purchase price, let's put in a million two fifty. Okay. This will make more sense once we get over actually into form 21. Um, but filling out the purchase price helps it auto populate. So, and then once you get into step two, this is going to ask you the transaction dates. Okay. So essentially you're just filling in the purchase and sale agreement date. Let's just say it's going to be today. You just click on it, it pulls up a calendar and you can just click it right there. Offer expiration date. So when is your offer going to expire? Let's just put that as tomorrow. Mutual acceptance date, you can leave blank. Uh, I don't know what uh, the wizard would populate for mutual acceptance date. Uh, I don't know, um, uh, but you can- Yeah, go ahead, Greg. If you, if you, when you, go to add the participants in this you can do this fully electronically and add the listing agent mm -hmm. and um and so then when the listing agent gets in there they that that date can be put in there that's why that's there um mm -hmm. i don't know if you do it that way uh if you include the listing agent in your offers and transaction desk but the idea being it'd be fully electronic if you do it that way got it got it that makes sense i didn't know that either that's good to know. I never include listing agents in transaction desk, um, but thank you for that tidbit, Greg. That's actually really nice to know. Where do you put it? Put what? Put the listing agents info. That's still to come. And as you go through this wizard, it's one of the next steps where you add the participants. Okay. Yep. Yep. So closing date. Uh, let's just do a regular thirty-day close. Uh, um, and then possession date. If it's different than closing date, adjust it as needed. Okay. So click over into three. This is where Greg was talking about. This is the contacts. Okay. So these contacts are pulled from the from matrix. So you can see that we have the listing broker, which is Janine, the listing firm, Donald Scott, the seller, okay, buyer broker firm, other seller, and another buyer broker. The one thing we're missing, as you can guess, is the buyer. Um, so we can add the buyer by clicking this add button. And you can, you, you can do it a variety of ways. You can create a new transaction contact, which if your buyer is not inputted into transaction desk, I would recommend you do that because it saves them. And if you're writing multiple offers for your buyers, it makes it so much easier just to grab them from your contact where the existing contacts sit 
and plug and play. You don't have to enter emails. You don't have to enter their names again. It's just super seamless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add existing contact. And as you can see, I have tons of buyers inside of this contact list. Um, so it makes it super easy for me. So let's assume I'm writing for my client Marjorie right here and Joe. They're already inputted in my contact list. I just plug them. You can see that their full name, their legal name and their email is here. So you can just press add. Confirm that it's correct. And yep, yep. do it one at a time. You are right, Joe. I noticed that just Joe added and Marjorie. Boom. Add. Confirm it's correct. That's it. Just like that. Marjorie and Joe. So here's where we start adding our forms. Okay. So we're going to add all the forms except the ones that are uploaded into um, the supplements. Let's do 22J, or I'm sorry, 22D. Just do 30, actually, let's do a full 35. And then 22A. What am I missing? 21, 20, 22A, 22, 25, 22. Okay. Perfect. Next. And then this is where all the supplements are going to populate. So this is all the supplements that the listing agent has inputted into Transaction Desk. Me personally, I like to go through and delete the stuff that I don't need, like prelim. You obviously don't need prelim inside of an offer. Features an upgrade list. You obviously don't need that inside of the offer. So you can just trash it. I like to do it because it makes it really clean. So when I'm pulling these from Transaction Desk actually into Authentisign, where we're going to go next, um, I can just grab exactly what I need. Um, and then I'm also going to take out 22E because I already know that this is not foreign citizen. Okay, so I deleted all the junk from the supplements, now I have 22K. Um, legal description, seller disclosure, we don't need 22J because this house was built in 2001. Okay, so now I clicked done, I'm out of my wizard. Okay, so now I'm sitting on the transaction desk homepage. And from here, I can go directly into forms. Okay, this is step number two after leaving the wizard. And I can start filling out what did not auto populate into um, or from that wizard onto these forms, right? Hey, so you can go, yeah, go ahead, Greg. Can you go back one screen? Uh, yes. Well, I'm just go back to the dashboard. Right. So <clears throat> this might save, this is one less step because when you clicked forms on the right, that mm -hmm. brought up only the forms, but you can fill out the forms here from your transaction dashboard too. It takes one step out of that. Just clicking right over here to the forms. You click that. Yep. Yep. So two different ways to get to the same spot, right? Um, but as you can see, we're on the 22A. I guess we'll just start here, right? As you can see, personal sale agreement date, auto-populated, my buyer's names, the seller's names, and the address, right? So that's what makes it super simple. And then you just fill out what you didn't fill out in uh, Transaction Desk, right? Conventional first, let's say 20% down, right? You're just going through and you're just filling out your your forms here, right? Will not, and then that's it. That's all you need to fill up your 22A. And you click over here into the save and exit. I'll show you again once I click over to the 35. The save and exit tool, always click it because it's gonna save what you inputted into the forms. If you don't click save and exit, it's not gonna save, okay? So again, we're just going through and we're just filling out 35, right? as everyone knows how to, okay, three days, and that's it, save and exit, and then 22D, we'll run through this one really fast, utilities, Okay. Save and exit. And then 21, obviously 21 is going to take, um, well, I mean, honestly, it might be the fastest depending on your workflow, but 21 is where the bulk of the information is going to be inputted. But as you can see, all of those dates that I put inside of the wizard are now auto populating onto form 21. If I didn't put those dates in the wizard, they're not going to pull up on form 21. So as you can see, like our agreement date, our offer expiration date, buyer names, the property, the tax ID, all this was pulled from matrix, except for obviously the things that I inputted, uh, which is what makes it, like I said, so easy. So obviously click what's gonna be included inside of the sale. Okay.
Ernest, my name. Oops, closing agent. And then I don't know who the individual is going to be. I'm just plugging and playing here. Okay, possession on closing. 22K. Prepaid in full. It's not. Expires. Say five. Okay, just offer. Okay, now plug in your addenda. 22A, 22D. 22K. And those are also pull down menus, Tyler. I'm going to show people that. Pull down menus, like what I'm doing right here. Can you not see my pull down menu? Oh, I don't see it. I'm going to pop over here. Oh, I must be. It must. It must not show up. But yeah, just like Greg mentioned, when I'm clicking here, and when you see me add one of these um, addendas, it's it's populating a pull down menu that I'm pulling them from. I don't know why you can't see it on the Google Meet, but um, I'm seeing it on on my screen. So everything that you're seeing me add is being populated from pull down, pull down menu. And then that's it, right? That's all okay. you need to fill out on your. Go back up to your status. Well, what am I missing? Status. Married, unmarried. Oh, thank you. Yes, you are correct, Greg. So, oops, not unmarried. These are a married couple. Boom. Anything I'm missing? Or I got everything? Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Okay, save and exit. Okay. Now, this is the part where I see most people mess up when using Transaction Desk. Okay. So we filled, we went through the wizard, we filled out our forms. Now we're getting into the point where we're going to exit Transaction Desk and go into Authentisign. Okay. Following this line by line, it's going to make your life easy and make the, and just make the whole entire signing process much more seamless. Okay. So go over into your forms. Okay. We were, forms here we're just clicking over into the sidebar you're going to click these bubbles right next to the forms 21 22a 22d and 35 notice how i went in order i present my offers in alphabetical based on the addenda how you click them is how they're going to populate into authentisign you see i put them in my basket click your basket and then send to new authentisign Click that, and we are now exiting Transaction Desk, and all of this is going to be thrown into Authentisign. Give it some time to populate, and boom, we're now in Authentisign. Before you start adding your participants and adding your signers, I like to go to the Docs tab. If you remember at the last uh, last uh, um, window or last page of the wizard, when we were in that portal, I deleted all the junk supplements and only kept the ones that I needed. That's where I'm going to add them now. So I'm over here in Docs, Add Document or Form. And as you can see, My Transaction, that's where all of these are stored. So I'm going to click my 22K, my Legal, and my Seller's Disclosure. Okay, and these auto-populated right here. I'm going to add my 22K into the fourth slot. As you can see, I just backspace, press 4, press Enter, and my 22K is now in the alphabetical order. All of my documents are here. Everything is already uploaded. Now I can go into my signers, add participants, and I'm gonna add them for my transaction. My buyers are right here, Joe and Marjorie, okay? So all I do is I select them, boom. And just like that, my signature boxes oh, wow. and initial boxes have been auto-populated. That's huge. Just like that. Boom. Don't have to do anything. I plug and play. I don't have to put any signing boxes. I can now send this directly to my clients, assuming I already filled out all the sections of my forms like I did when I was still in Transaction Desk without even thinking about it. So 22K, as you can see, 22K, 22K doesn't have my buyers filled out. That's because it wasn't in the wizard. So I have to just manually do this. Um, but Andy, what do you got? I saw you had a hand up. Yeah, that's all I was going to mention. You said you didn't have to put anything in, but if it's it's really important to understand the difference between a doc and a form on Transaction mm -hmm. Desk. So documents are documents that are pulled in from the actual listing. So if you open up a listing and there's the uh, attachments field, anything the listing agent puts in there basically and pulls in on here is considered a document. Um, whereas a form is what you fill out manually within Transaction Desk. Those are autofilled. 
Um, you just have to manually enter in the uh, these fields for like purchase sale uh, agreement date, buyer names, etc. Yep. Yep. Thanks for that, Andy. Um, and when I need to do this, I can now go into my tools bar and you see there's a full name option. I think DocuSign has this too. But I click over into Joe, grab and drag his full name. Don't have to type it. One thing I do have to type is purchase sale date. I grabbed a text box from the tool section right here. I just dragged it. Click on my text, input the date. Where and was the I, text box? You did that so fast. Sorry, Joe. So I'm over here in my tools. Yep. If you look markup right here, text box is right here. Got it. Yep. So you just click <clears throat> and drag. Or sorry. Oh, click. there's actually there's a line. There is. Yep. Yeah. So I have Arnie, more than any DocuSign we have to take X's because the line went away. Oh yeah, oh. that's this is a good one here. It's a nice fat red line too. Yeah. yeah. So if if I want to, let's let's actually go to thirty five. Um thirty five. I don't know about you guys and I, I've gotten pushback from Scott from it too. Don't don't beat me now <laughs> in this training. But sometimes I do pass fail inspections for like a lot of my investor clients who like to do really quick pass fail so inspections and Yep. And then one of the ways you can do that, it, you know, depending on what your um, cooperating partner listing agent is, um, what their appetite is. Basically, what you can do is you can cross off certain sections of 35 in order to make it more clear. So sometimes you can go like this. Cross stuff out essentially just making this possible inspection. But yeah, as you can see, I'm using my lines in order to um, wow. you know, cross that off, drag my buyer initials. If you, this is just a little trick. If you click on the initial, you can add a date stamp, boom, date populates just like that. If your buyer's signature blocks are too big, you can scale them down mm. to make your contract nice and clean scale them down just like that right do the same thing for marjorie hey, Click on her thing, name. the only thing i add to that is when you change those things you can save as default settings so then every time you add in uh initial block it'll include it'll be the right size and it'll include the uh date settings too yep 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 thanks for that andy um, so it already has their initials in the box that just indicates where they're supposed to initial when they initial right because i'm used to seeing that as completely a blank square no that just it just shows whose initials it is right okay, good. that's, that's what i thought i just want to make yep. sure yep yep i have a quick question too what do you got laura if you have sent yeah. this to your buyers and you notice that there's something that needs to be corrected or they want okay let's change earnest money can you, if obviously if they don't sign it, can you go back into this and edit it without having to recreate the documents and resend? Yes. And even if they do sign it, you can still make those adjustments. I'll show you how once we get through this, this last portion. Okay. Thanks. So Andy and Greg, do you use any more tools besides text box and line on the markup? option i use strike through instead of line just because it makes a straight line for me and i don't have to worry about making it straight because yours are all okay. jacked up and crooked <laughs> okay thanks for that um, Greg. yeah that's that's it um and sometimes i'll use checkbox just depending on where it's at right yep yep that's a really good point um let me show checks checkbox once we um once we get to a, an applicable form for it um I think the only time I've ever used checkbox is for uh, 22J. On yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Any anywhere else, guys? We've used it. Nope. That's it. Just uh, just on the 22J because they're initialing. <laughs> I think you can read 22D. Don't you check something mm -hmm. on there? Or it auto populates on that checkbox. No. Right? So the checkbox tool, Joe, is specific to like in this case, it's blue, so it's Marjorie. So it's specific to Marjorie. So when Marjorie goes through and initials 
she has to affirmatively check the box. So that's why it's a big deal on the 22J, the lead-based paint, right? So I'm, I'm officially saying I've received all of this information. I have to check it and then um, and then I have to initial next to it. That's the only time I yep. use it. You're right, Andy. Yep, so kind of just get, just tying, tying that loop. Um, if you have a section of a form where a buyer has to explicitly check, right? That's what it's calling for, like a 22J. You can pull these check boxes, okay? Drag it over and that is not gonna check unless the buyer when they're signing clicks and checks right so it's essentially mm -hmm. doing that action for them i yes. inputted it here on the 22 day 22 d just as an example and now show them since we need to delete that just show them how to delete that how easy it is to delete that oh yeah you just click and i just hit delete on my mac boom done yeah just like that so if anything shows up it doesn't yeah exactly boom yeah. just anything just boom delete gone Okay. So, um, initials, lines, check boxes, signature blocks, right? Obviously on um, legal, just drag and drop. And then bottom of 17, as you can see, it auto populates just like that. I didn't even have to do it. Sent to the client. So if you actually wanted to sign on line two, you would just quickly delete those. What's what's on line one? And no. Then just, no. Well, just, still have to you add. Not, you need both line signs, so you add. So, um, Tyler, one of the things that I mentioned in the email the other day is certain agents will need to send their offer to a mentor or a supervisor agent for review. So can you go back to signers and show us how you would do that? Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you two ways. Uh, but before we exit from here, does anybody have any questions about what we just did? Fantastic. Um, so let's, let's hop over to what Greg mentioned, right? I'm scrolling all the way up to the top, right? As you can see, everything is filled out. The only thing I need to do to send it to my clients, just click next, right? Can you, okay. And then so, I hit send, it'll go. <laughs> but, but before you send it to your client, so so Sal's not here, but Sal would send that to me. So go click on signers. Yep. Add participant. Add participant. And let's add new, because I don't have Greg. I just really Greg. E-L-W-I-N. Boom, I got that. Greg at Raintown. Yep realty.com as you can see you have um can i put you in as a role no. yep buyer broker um, no i don't think so or other maybe yeah other let's do other but then we're gonna add greg as a reviewer where it says signer tight add him as a reviewer and then you need to set signing order. Yes, you're correct, Greg. Thank you for that. Um, where am I missing that? Uh, they have to hit save first. Thank you, sir. Um, and then you want to set signing order at the top there. Yes, that's signing order. Right here. Mm -hmm. Boom. Drag, Greg, back to... Yeah, you can type it in and drag it around. So that will come to me first to review it and then and so this this is part of the reason tyler the the history why transaction desk hasn't been used so much in our brokerage is because of the challenge with reviewing and editing um agents uh, offers when they're in that role and so this is our, our kind of our workaround to that so when that comes to me i have the opportunity to go through it look at it all and i can reject it with comments um, or I can approve it and then would automatically go to the buyers. Can you edit it? Cannot edit it. And um, this is yeah. the this is the big conversation that we've had. I don't believe that my job as a reviewer is to edit it. I think my job as a reviewer is to review it and identify issues that need to be addressed and then call that agent and say, hey, I'm going to send this back to you because this, this, and this. And that's the best way to learn. I believe. I agree. I agree. 
So then the same, right. he would just send next, hit next. And Tyler, do you do you uh, customize your invite email invites to your on that next screen? I I don't customize the the email itself, but what I do do, and thank you for bringing that up, Greg. This top bar that you see, this signing name is what's going to be sent over to your clients um, on kind of the body of the email. So what I do is instead of saying address form 21 reds under personal sale agreement, okay, I delete this. This is just me, right? I'll say signing needed offer, just like that. So this is what the clients are going to see in that subject line of their email when they open it up. So they know it's coming from me, signing is needed for their offer, and the address is directly after. Greg, do you do anything on, like if I click next year, do you do anything on this page or customize invites or anything like that? Yeah, I, I always, not always. Um, usually I'll customize the invites, especially if it's a client that's my first or second offer with them. If we're writing third or fourth or it's way down the line, they don't need me. But yeah, I just say, hey, Greg, here you go. Here's the offer. Let me know if you have any questions. And sometimes newer clients, I'll even spell out some of it right you'll notice on yeah. the form 22d that this box is checked and this is what that means mm -hmm. it's not just an opportunity there you go sign it. get off your ass and sign it oh that's funny oh you can actually oh so you can customize it for every single every single um uh, client or every single uh, participant in the in the signing order yeah, you can. So it just depends. Like, you know, if I got a husband and wife and the husband's a dummy and the wife's not, I'll spell it out for hubby. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Anything else on off on the side before we get out of here? Comments, questions. Cool, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to back out and I can save or not save. So let's say I'm in, I'm editing an offer, I'm waiting for some final terms. Um, you can back out of it and you can still save it. Always, always, always click save. I don't know why you would click don't save. Would it make sense to me? So this is saved uh, okay. and this, oh, what you got Andy? Oh, I just gonna say like, what happens like when you have a counter and you get a counter back from the sellers, how easy is it to edit it and adjust things? It's, it's super, super simple. To do that stuff. I don't want to go into that today. Maybe, maybe we can touch on that. Maybe on like a part two. Um, I, I want to get into the sharing feature of Transaction Desk because I think that is significantly underutilized. When I joined Raintown, uh, I showed Renee how to use this, and it's made our listings significantly easier. So I, I want to dive into that. Um, and then if we have time, Andy, we can we can jump into the the counters and stuff like that. Um, but as you can see, right, my signing is still right here. It's in the draft stage. Okay, um, let me let me do this because Laura, you had a question about if you send it, can you re-edit it and stuff like that. Let me go actually into my transaction really quick, and let me let me kick my clients out of here. Andy, you're going to get this offer. I guess your email right, Andy? Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> And that window that popped up asking for the buyers, always fill that out. That's what auto populates. As you can see, Andy is now the only signer inside of this offer. Okay, Greg, Andy. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna send this out. Okay. So I sent the offer out. As you can see, it's in the sent phase. It just pinged Greg for review and Andy for signing. Um, you can go, Laura, into the more options window right here. You can reset the signing. The authentic sign is going to reset the data. All signed documents will be lost. Click yes. 
right? And it just threw me back over into the authentic sign window. So if I need to make adjustments, if I need to make changes, after it's sent, I can just reset it, throws me back into here. If I need to make any big changes, you can go back, revisit your forms right here. Let's say edit form 21 if you wanted to. Let's say they say, hey, there's competition. We need to increase our offer to 1.275, right? You can jump right into here. One, two, seven, five. Always click save, right? Go back to your signings. That's where we left. You can open this window and you should be able to remove form 21 and add form 21. Put that back into the first spot and you can see we now have a million two seven five purchase price. See how easy that was? Yeah. Boom. I think once you get in there and start playing around with it, yeah. Yep. Yep. All about repetition for sure. If you need to make small edits, um, like let's say you notice that there's a microwave and your clients want to add the microwave into the personal sale agreement. You can just grab a text box, click, click, put an X. This is just what I do. You can drag it. Now it's checked. Right? Small stuff like that. So the checkbox wouldn't be used for something like that? The checkbox is for the clients. That's only for so, them to click on it. Right. So this okay. checkbox where it's on attached cameras, Andy would have to go in there and click it himself. Like for me, if it's not an acknowledgement for a buyer or seller, I just I just okay. put it. Yep. That's a little change from the DocuSign because the checkbox is used differently. It's actually used as an X to mark a box. Got it. So, so Joe, if you look at under the signer action, action sign here, initials, checkbox, all that stuff, it's blue. And that corresponds with, that means it's something Andy has to do. Um, mm -hmm. The stuff down below, the signer fields markup, that's stuff that we, we do. So if it's got a color associated with it, then that means it's something that the the signer is going to have to do. Mm. All that stuff we just fill in and put on there. Got it. Yep. And when you switch to switch to me, it'll be a different color. Yep. I don't have it in here. Start, right wouldn't you want to go back and review that though? Because what if they start putting stuff in there that's not in there? You know, like if they're going to add attached speakers or attached TVs, and those aren't part of the offer. Is there a way to turn that feature off? That they can't they can't do it, Laura. Once it gets to them, they can't add anything. All they okay. can do, all, all all your clients can do is check the box that we set for them or sign an initial. But okay. that's why you don't want to use the wrong X either. Right. Yeah. You don't want to use checkbox where you don't need it to be a checkbox. When they start clicking it like, oh yeah, I want a microwave. But if you use the text totally. box X, then it's just they can't do anything with it. And it's sense. and you only have to use the text box once you get into AuthentiSign because once you're back in transaction desk, you'll just when you're editing those forms, you'll just check the boxes. Then you'll very rarely need to do it in this window. It's only if something changes after the fact. Right. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So just like Greg mentioned, if you wanted to go in and just click it like this, right? You can and then save it and you can go through and re-add form 21 like I just showed you or showed you previously. Cool, cool. Anything on this before I jump into sharing the transaction? Sweet. So sharing a transaction, I'm, I'm getting a little bit advanced there. Sharing a transaction, in my opinion, is the best feature of Transaction Desk. I've been out in the field sometimes on tours and I've shared transactions with Andy and Clint saying, hey, I'm out. Can you send this offer? Can you edit this offer? Can you just, you know, help me help me while I'm away from the desk? Um, and this feature allows you to do that. Greg, you can share with your mentees. 
Um, when we have listings go up, I share all of my transaction listings with Renee and Rob so they can do the edits, they can review it. It's a way for everyone to have access to the same portal. Okay, that's that's the whole purpose of it. Um, this is how you do it. I'm gonna walk through it very, very slow. Um, if anyone has any questions, definitely, definitely stop me along the way. So if you click into this menu bar right here, you can see that there's a Teams and sharing feature. Okay. You click on this Teams and sharing feature and you can add, as you can see, these are all of my listings. You can add um, people into your Teams, right? I'll show you how to get those contacts in there. So you go to, sorry, I might have to refresh my, my brain on this here dashboard no not dashboard the hands down here is it this one sorry now i'm just randomly clicking to see how to get to the settings there should be a settings feature uh, sorry what are you looking for the settings uh oh like the cog Yes. Yeah, it's probably there on the left pane. I don't, I don't know if they moved it or something. Let me see if it looks different on my page. Yeah, did they? Let's pause the task. There, is, there should be a seven. Oh, is it in? Oh, boom. Andy, it's here. So, okay. Refresh, restart. Go up to your little guy right here next to the top right next to the shopping cart and a little question mark you're going to see a settings bar mm -hmm. click on the settings bar this will bring you to teams and sharing okay click on teams and sharing these are all of my shared transactions i can go to create team and share let's just say bottle offer save i'm creating another team and sharing. Now I can add everybody. Let's say I want to add Sal. And let's say I need to add Greg. Let's say Rob needs to be on this. I clicked all those boxes, as you can see, and you have to scroll down and go to add members. Boom. So as you can see, Rob, Greg, and Sal now have full transaction permission over this transaction, okay? You can edit it to read, write, uh, I've never done that myself. I've, I always do full. Okay. And you can click save. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my little home guy. Right can here. you stop? Oh. Oh, sorry. What did you say, Greg? I'm going to go back. Well, on that allow impersonation box. Yes. So what I'll do, I, I won't do that with everybody, but on a listing, I do that with Renee. So then Renee can send correspondence, edit, and act as if she's working on my behalf, right? So if she sends a Form 17 to a seller, um, then it will it'll show that it's coming from me. Good to be, Greg. Good to know. Thanks so I'll save him. these settings. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Laura. Well, I'm just saying thanks for sharing this because I was I wondering why we would need, need to be doing sharing through it, mm -hmm. but this is perfect. Yep. Mostly for me, it's it's a, it's about listings, right? And working with Renee so we can, we can work collaboratively on getting the listing ready. For sure, for sure. I see this as a big application to the mentees too, right? Um, yeah, it, it could be, a, um, I kind of like it. I think we're gonna talk more about it. Yeah, so you click save, right? Save your settings go over to your home. This home page brings you to all of your transactions. This was the dashboard we were just in, right? We're gonna go over into those little three menu dots, teams and sharing, scroll down to bottle offer, right? That's the that's the uh, group that we just created. Click this add arrow. I don't know why, I wish they would just have a plus mark, but they have this little arrow for whatever reason. Um, you can input a message, notify the assigned users of the team and share. Um, and you can click save. Now, Greg can open up his transaction desk and see this, right? This transaction right here. 
He's able to go into the forms, um, all that stuff. All that stuff. So that's how you gain access to anybody within the firm that needs to take a look at it. That is all I had for transaction desk training. As you can see, it's been less than an hour and we had, we drafted the offer, edited the offer, sent the offer, shared the offer, we did all that. It's it's really, really quick and really, really easy. And the best part is it's integrated with Matrix, all that data, like I said, just auto populates. Like I, I can't be a, a bigger advocate for this for, for this tool, I, I, I think it's fantastic. There's also a mobile app for Transaction Desk if you want to download on your phone. Um, if I'm out, not taking my laptop and I send an offer, um, I can download it from Transaction Desk after it's sent. Uh, I hear it all the time. You'll hear clients say, oh, I, I don't see the signing. I don't see the signing. I can resend signings from the mobile app. Um, it, it's, it's, it's great. Clint drafts offers from the mobile app. I don't know how he does it, but he does. Um, you can do you can do all that stuff. So who uses uh, who, who uses HomeSpotter? Yeah, yeah. So I do. if so, you yeah. if you go to HomeSpotter, go to HomeSpotter, and just click on your uh, on your uh, listing, listing, scroll down, and um, right there, transaction desk. Yep. Then you can start writing your offer right there in your phone. Boom. I've I've definitely done that. I've drafted like a full offer before through HomeSpotter. Um, the mobile app is like the mobile app's fine, but I don't think it scales very well. Like the, no. the images don't scale super well. But if you go on HomeSpotter, you can zoom in and pinch the zoom and do all the little stuff you need to do. Um, and it scales like really nicely. I mean, yeah, it is HomeSpotter works, really works a little bit better. It. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time and doing that. For sure, for sure, my pleasure. If anybody wants to walk through it a little bit more, ask questions, I mean, definitely let me know. Um, and we can do that. I don't know, we might do a part two. Like I said, it's a really dynamic uh, tool and feature, so you can do a bunch more stuff than what I showed. You can buy, I bought a home warranty last month <laughs> for, for a client, and it got sent right to escrow, because I had escrow in my contacts. So, I mean, it, it's, it just goes to show that they, they have a lot of integration with the MLS here. But uh, I hope it was helpful. I, I hope you, you got something from it and I hope you utilize it to, to your success.